Hello everyone, welcome, Spencer here. Uh, today um, I'm looking a bit at my uh, Gishath deck. Um, now this is like a, a mid-power deck that I've got. Um, and I'm not looking to upgrade it as such, more just tweak and optimise within the budget area. Um, so one of the problems I'm facing with this deck is that I'm not always getting Gishath out quick enough to get an attack in to trigger him to start getting the diners out on the battlefield. Uh, now the problem with that is, it's not, the problem with it is I'm running minimal interaction. So minimal removal, anything that interacts with opponents, things like that, because I'm relying on basically creating a board state of dinosaurs and then attacking into opponents and winning that way. And because I want this to be like a mid power level, I don't want it to be like super interactions, I don't want any like infinite combos as dinosaurs come in and ping themselves, create multiple dinosaurs, then destroy the original dinosaur, then attack him with infinite dinosaurs. There's no infinite wink on, it is just commander damage or overrun with dinosaurs type thing. So, really, really simple. This is the type of deck that if I'm trying to introduce someone into commander, I'm like, there you go, you can play this. You just play lands, cast big creatures, play lands, cast big creatures, you know. Just smash in. When you smash people's face, you get rewarded. So it's a really simple concept to to get people understanding the format and the basics of ramp, because ramp is probably the most important thing in Commander, along with probably card draw and a million other things of interaction and stuff like that. Which one comes first? Ah, that's debatable. Anyway, sidewise. So at the moment, like if I get Gishath, he's eight mana. So if I get him out on turn six. You know, chances are people have blockers, so I'm not getting a full connect. Maybe they're blocking two or three damage, maybe they're blocking four damage, depending on how big the booty is on the uh, the creature they've got defending. Ideally, I want to get him out early enough so I can swing before they've got blockers, or swing while they've only got like a mana dock or something that they don't want to lose, they don't want to exchange. Um, so this is the plan. In order to do that, I've gone through everything, and I think I just need to upgrade my ramp. When I say upgrade, just expand upon it. So I've been doing a little bit of research recently into lands and the percentage of drawing those lands uh, by X turn. So at the moment I'm running 36 lands, I believe. 36 lands, but I'm going to try. I don't know if this is going to work, this could cause me flooding out, but I'm going to up it to 40. Plus, I've got ramp-wise, I believe, let's just double check here. I think I've got 17 at the minute. 17 ramp and uh, rock cards. So Wayfarer, Soaring, Wild Growth, Arcane, Rampant, Farseek, Nature's Law, Cadamus Ridge, Cultivate, Rolling, Regrowth, New Horizons, Nature's Embrace, Grafted um, Growth, uh, Circuitous Roots, Migrations Path, Explosive Vegetation, and Peregrination. Now, you'll notice none of these are crazy fancy, like I said, mid power level. So I want to add to that. I also have six creatures which affect the mana cost of items. So dinosaurs cost one last. Uh, add one mana of any colour, be of a mana dock. Add one mana of any colour, you know. Um, Topri Stomper allows me to go and fetch uh, a land, so kind of like pseudo ramp. Wayward Sawtooth allows me to put more land into the battlefield each turn. So as long as I've got the lands, it's okay. Then we we'll skip through these to the next costings, and then we've got Knight of Stampede it lets me go get um, Let's be go get. I'm thinking of four of the empires. Uh, dinosaur spells cost two less, so that helps it accelerate my a little bit more. And that's it in terms of dinosaur ramp. I have regal behemoth, but that's like way too far down the land to class as ramp type thing. Also, this card is just getting a reprint in the new commander's master set, so should bring the price down a little bit. I mean, I got it. I got it. Luckily. Um, da, 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 da. That's my creatures if you're interested. But yeah, so we've got like six cards in terms of creatures which help and assist the ramp rock package. Um, but I'm not really counting them too much. The other thing I looked at was um, lands and um, mana rocks and the odds of drawing those. Um, so I really want to up the average of that. Um, and I was. It, made me start looking into the percentages of drawing a card in a deck. Um, I don't know if this is stuff other people think about, but it's obviously something I think about. Like, 
obviously your commander deck is 100 cards, so every card there's a 1% chance you can draw it. But obviously your commander's in your command zone, so it's like 1 of 99 cards. So then it's like 1.01% oh, chance you'll draw that card. But then by the time you've actually started a game and you've drawn your first hand of 7, you know, that's 7 cards in your hand, so the first draw is actually like a 1.087% chance of drawing any particular card. So, the point is, like, <laughs> that's probably like too fine a detail to put on it, it's like, it's about a percentage. So, if you've got 25 of a certain type of card in your deck, I have 25 dinosaurs. I have more than that creatures, but I have 25 dinosaurs specifically. Um, so, whenever I draw a card, I've got a 25% chance the first time I draw that card to draw a dinosaur. So my opening hand of 7, the first 4 cards I draw, chances are one of them's going to be a dinosaur. Yeah. Then by the time I get to 8 cards, I might have 2 dinosaurs. But the, by the time I get another 4 cards down, my odds aren't 1 in... My odds aren't 25% anymore, 1 in 4. Um, it's now slightly less, so it might be like 1 in 4.5 cards is a dinosaur. And slowly, the more dinosaurs I pull out of my deck, it's one in five, one in six, you know? So the odds get worse. This is important to remember with this deck, especially with Gishath. Because if I'm sat there holding four dinosaurs in hand and I've got Gishath on the board, you know, I know that 25 dinosaurs in that, there's only 21% chance of me drawing a card. That's one in five. Gishath flips seven if I get a full connect. If I'm only hitting for four because somebody's got a blocker, in that the odds of me flipping a dinosaur have just plummeted. Yeah? So, this is the reason for the shebang. Let's upgrade it, tweak it, make it a little more efficient. This is why I want Gishath out earlier. So, the reason I'm uh, not having loads of removal as well, this is my removal. Path to Exile Beast within Generous Gift. That's it. Like, you see that a lot of the other removal bits are here? They're all going. Yeah, I don't want a board ripe. Um, Kenris Transformation is great at stopping something with scary abilities, but I'm a dinosaur deck. I'm swinging in. All they're going to do is jump with it, block it, it goes into the graveyard, they get it back. You know, it's like just a temporary removal thing. You know, I mean, it cycles itself, but yeah. Uh, Colossus Magistrate, that only triggers on my upkeep, whereas uh, Guardian Project and Garrus Uprising, they trigger when the ETB happens. So when Gishath connects, one of these are on the battlefield, and I flip three dinosaurs, I get three card draws. Or, if I've got both these in place, I get six. The point is, this flipping triggers these, because if they're already on the battlefield. Um, it's Clash of Majesty, I've got to wait three players' turns. It's not next turn, it's three players' turns before I can get the benefit of that. Um, Banishing Light, I mean, this is absolute solid card in white. Um, three mana, exile non permanent. But, you know, I'm saving this for something that's basically... It's got to be a permanent that is going to enable their combo or enable their win con. Like, and if they're playing Voltron, like, yes, I could get rid of a, like a Vorpal Sword or Feast and Famine or whatever, you know. Or if they've got like a an Umbra, I could get rid of that. But it doesn't get rid of the commander. It doesn't get rid of the actual problem. It doesn't stop the efficiency of an opponent's deck. It just delays. Um, so that's the reason why I'm dropping them. Return to Nature is just a one of. Destroy Artifact, Destroy Chairman, Exile Carbon Graveyard. I mean, it's it's solid, but I'm relying on dinosaurs here. I'm not I'm not holding up two mana to you know to to stop somebody getting a card out of the graveyard. Let them get them card. I'm doing player removal. I'm smashing in. Um, lastly, Blasphemous Act. You know, if somebody goes wide on me, somebody makes fifty tokens in front of me. Like if they not if they've got haste, I'm in a bit of trouble. But you know, if they've not got haste and they're waiting for their next turn. Like, I'm not casting Blasphemous Axe, I'm getting more dinosaurs out there with Trample. You know, my guy's going to trample over all their little 1-1s, one their 2-2s two or whatever. They're going to be throwing three or four of them under every dinosaur. You know, then with a decent enough rank package, if Gishath dies, just recast him again on next turn, it's got haste, smash face again, 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 again. Also why it's very important to have a lot of mana in this deck, because the biggest weakness is the commander. If he gets removed, obviously it's two more the next turn, then four... Then six, you know, he already costs eight. Two mana is a lot to add on to this. So, ramp, mana, lands, we need them. That's the justification. Um, other things I'm thinking about are just in Rhythm of the Wild. My commander has haste. If I've got this out and I play my commander, yeah, even if I get a full hit of seven, 
they all come in play. Yes, I get a plus one, plus one counter on them, but the haste is not really a benefit. So, like, I'm just getting ditching this. Like, plus, plus, plus one, plus one on something that's already seven, eight power is nothing. So, not beneficial enough. So, that's coming out. Um, these lands are going to be tweaked and changed. So, I quite like the bounce lands. Um, quite cost effective. Um, I mean, I'd get all the pathways if I could instead. Um, but I think the pathways are about between 10 to $15 at the minute, and the bounce lands are like half that. Um, other lands I already have are the pain lands. Well, I have two of the pain lands, so I want to get another one of the pain lands, really. And I want to get Castle Amberth. So if I have Gishath out one turn, and then next turn I've got Castle Amberth in play, I can spend all of my mana just pumping Gishath to get more and more triggers with Castle Amberth. Um, other lands I've got are the temples, three temples, just to set up my next card draw. If I play this at the beginning of my turn and I know I'm attacking with Gishath and there's a nice dinosaur on top, I know I can leave it on top. If it's a land, I can bin it. If it's a land and I need it because I'm playing this before to ramp out, then I can use it. So this is where tap lands and scry kind of come in handy. Other than that, I've got commanders, jet mirrors, uh, terramorphic and evolving wilds. The reason I've got jet mirrors is because I have a couple of bits that allow me to search for forest in the terms of my ramp package. Um, so, search the library for a plain silence swamp mountain card. So, not that one. Forest card. And I think there's another one that allows me to search specifically for a forest. Or oh, maybe that's what I've been looking at. And I've not got it yet. Maybe that's what I was looking at. I've not got it yet. So, oh, well, the other one is the MDFC. MDFC for the fight. So, this is a land if I need it to be. But more importantly, it's a fight to remove like a 1-1 one -one death toucher or something like that that's getting in my way so I can pick something to pick off the creature threat. Um, yeah, other enablers that I've got. So you see my card draw, you see my removal. So Worldly Tutor is just a nice little combo piece. Um, and like I say combo piece, I mean combos with Kishath in the sense of go to attack, no blocks, okay. Cash Worldly Tutor, get something I want on top. You know, so I'm guaranteed to get that flip. Normally it's going to be the Apex Altasaur, is it? The one that reduces all the damage? Let's flip through. Oh no, Apex Altasaur is the one that fights everything, and the which is good to see if somebody's got a lot of creatures on the board. Put that on top, flip that, it centers, starts fighting everything. It's almost like removal. If I know I've got time to the next turn, I can play this. Um, but where's the other white one? Temple Altasaur. Altasaur. And this is the one that allows my com uh, commander, my creatures, to take all but one of that damage. So basically, leaves everything at one life if they do like a blast sight on me. Or try and do like 10 damage or whatever. Um, so yeah, other than that, we have Unbreakable Formation, which I thought is good. You know, cast it on your main phase, everything gets plus one, plus one, gain vigilance. So if you're in a bit of a world stall, you can get that sorted. Um, Great Henge, just a solid card. I got so lucky in throwing a Veldra and I bought two of these bad boys. Um, and I partly wish I would have sold them. <laughs> you know, 100 quid is, uh, is a lot of money. Um, but I've kept them and you know now they've been reprinted twice. Because uh, I think this is getting a reprint in Commander Masters and it's just been semi-reprinted in Lord of the Rings as the party tree. But it's mythic, so maybe the price won't alter too much. Who knows? And the original cards do tend to hold the value more than others, but we'll see. Um, um, so yeah, Unbreakable Formation, Great Henge. You know, most of the time I'm casting this for two because I've got Gishath out or something like that. Um, this also obviously triggers when creatures enter the battlefield, so drawing cards and putting counters on everything. Um, so yeah, so they are like my, my enhancers. Um, then the memory removal. So... Um, what am I upgrading, what am I tweaking, what am I getting into? So, some of these are not very fancy, like I said. Here we are, look. Path to the Festival, Grow from the Ashes, and a Fastwood Surge. Yeah, a four mana ramp spell. You know, a three mana ramp spell, but I can kick it. You know, and then Path to the Festival. It's just a three mana ramp spell, but I can flash it back as well. So if I cast this on turn three, I can then cast it on turn five. Yeah, as long as I'm hitting my lands every turn. So these just help emphasize and add to it and with these three as well that'll take my 
mana rocks and ramp spells from 17 up to 20. Yeah, so that's one in every five cards will be a ramp spell of sorts. So that means in my first uh, 10 cards, so by turn three, I should have at least two of these. Yeah, which is good because I need that to be able to cast my commander on like turn five or so. So five lands plus two of those, I should be able to get up to eight mana. Yeah, for turn eight. Uh, turn eight. Turn that. No, that'd be turn six. So turn five. Uh, turn three. So it would be ten cards seen. So that'd be two of those. So that's three. And these, on average, get me one extra land per turn. So if I cast one on turn two and then one on turn three, um, yeah, I will be okay to cast on turn five. I believe. I think that's what I worked out as. I mean, my best start is. Um, land into Soul Ring, into Arcane Signet, into Wild Growth, which nets me five mana on turn two. The odds of drawing those specifics, psh, unlikely. Um, but yeah, so those are what I'm adding in, in terms of to my ramp package. So let's just say I'll ditch those three, and they'll become them three. And then the other bits I thought through was if we get into a bit of a board state, Ram through is quite nice because it's got the trample. Um, so target creature deals damage to equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Um, the creature con if the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to that creature controller. So it gives you the trample effect on a fight spell, you know, and it's two mana. So it allows me to get Gishash through, or like any other big dumb dino I've got out to like get through and get that kill if somebody's like on four or five life and then a bunch of blockers up in the way, you know, I can just smash face, smash through. Um, the Savage Stomp I was thinking about, I mean it costs two less if it targets a dinosaur, pretty much everything in here is a dinosaur that's going to be fine, so it's only going to cost one, puts a plus one to counter on it, so it's a little bit of like pseudo removal, but like I've got that in this, so this is not going to cut it, I'm just going to say no to this one. Um, other lands I've got, so in, in terms of like mana fixing to make sure I have all three colours as well. There's nothing worse than mana ramping and missing like the plains or missing like the forest or missing the mountain or whatever, just missing that one you need. Um, obviously because I'm, I know now going up to 40 lands, um, I'm going to always pretty much have my um, land per turn by turn five. I think at 40 lands is like a 46% chance you'll have five lands on turn five which is pretty good plus the two ramp spells or well, turn five you would have seen three ramp spells potentially so turn five you're smashing face with the Galter the Galter Gishath um Galter's the other big dumb dino um so yeah Temple of the False Gods as long as I don't draw it turn one if it's in my opening hands I'm probably gonna have to ditch that hand depending on what else is in it um uh there we've got Crows and Verge and Myriad Landscape these are both pretty much the same two mana sack it can go get two lands, you know, so it gives me an extra land, basically, a turn. Um, so if I ditch these three and put these three in, that'll take me up from the 36, 37 that I've got to the 40. Um, it might be 39 if I've got 36. Um, oh yeah, that's it. It's 39 actual lands and 40 with the, um, the MDFC. So I've looked at some of the other MDFCs, but yeah... Um, nothing's really ticking the boxes for this deck specifically. Um, like I said earlier, um, there's one more pain land I'd like to get. At that point I would be looking at my deck and probably either dropping a mountain or a forest or something like that. Uh, sorry, mountain or a plains to get the Boros pain land. And then the Castle Land Breath I would obviously drop a mountain to. Or would I drop a mountain? Depends on how I've got I'd, I'd have to double check my um, coloured pips because I don't want to drop a mountain then have Castle Iron Breath come into my hand and not have a mountain to play untapped. So I might drop one of the other colours, which might be a green, because I know I am already quite low to the ground on the white, because most of the time when I go to fetch a land I will fetch a white, because there's a couple of spells in here that are like two and three pip whites, and I have the least amount of basic white lands in them all. So those are the tends to be the ones I need to fetch. Um, yeah, these are things like when you're playing your decks, you should you should think about these things of like knowing what lands you need to fetch, because um, this is 
know when you're playing a game and you're like, uh, what do I do? Understanding your lines and what you need to do to trigger your deck to make it win allows you to play your turn stop a lot more quickly. Um, and if more people do this, a game of Commander goes from being an hour half long to being 45 minutes long because people are just being a bit more efficient with their own time and knowing their lines of their decks. Um, so yeah, um, the other thing is, if you're looking at this and you're like, I want to upgrade this to super high end, go fast mana. Mana vaults, mana crypts, uh, lotus petals, jeweled lotus, mox opals, you know, like, you want to put this on speed, you know, and go, go ham super fast, then you're going to have to go fast mana, you know. I mean, and if you've got 300 quid to spend on five artifacts, then go do it if that's what you want to do. But I think there's probably better decks to do it in than Gisha. Um, what else have we got? Um, I think that's about it. Um, like I said, it's just about getting Gisha as quick as possible. Um, I'm going to a commander night on Tuesday, so I'm going to get all this package together. Um, I finally got my... Uh, other bits for my Merfolk deck, so I'm going to go those, those, those in. There's three decks I want to play on Tuesday. It's my Merfolk deck, it's my Dino Hair deck, and it's this Gishak deck. Those are the ones I want to try and get at least two games in with each, so hopefully I get some fast players and we can um, smash it out. But yeah, awesome stuff. Um, I'll let you know how it goes. Um, it could be that going up to like the 40 lands, including the MDFC, and going up to 20 in a ramp that I just flood out too much and when I hit with Gishath I'm not hitting enough dinosaurs so I'm only getting one trigger or two triggers um, but like I say I've got 25 dinosaurs not including Gishath in the deck so 1 in 4 is a flip so it's like 1.5 dinosaurs per flip but obviously that gets worse after every one um, so maybe I need to look at my creatures and if the ramp package is enough, maybe I can ditch a few of these um, cost removal ones or like mana or dork ones and swap them in for actual dinosaurs to then increase my rate of hitting a dinosaur so it's at least a body on the battlefield. So we shall see, we shall see. Um, yeah, I need to find a spot for this one as well, don't I? Because those are staying, those are going in place of them. So that. I mean, if I go to 39 lands, this is a better removal spell than this, so maybe that's what I do. Yeah, let's do that. Awesome stuff. Right, I've got a plan. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to get sleeved up. I'm going to leave you guys in peace. Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you all soon, and uh, stay safe. Goodbye.